Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're awesome. God, I'm excited for what you're about to do in your house tonight. Lord, you are good. Lord, you have never failed me and you won't start now. God, you're a miracle worker. You're still my healer. You're still my deliverer. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Ten more seconds. Let's give them the loudest praise we've given anything this week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a need in your body, I invite you to come to the front at this time. And let's worship with our praise team.
experienced his victory has he been good to anyone oh he's never failed us oh he's still victorious hallelujah 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 it's gonna be an awesome sunday night amen for all of our guests and our visitors we want to say welcome if it's your first time here we're so happy you're here at this time we're just gonna take a few moments church let's greet each other and greet all of our guests Amen. As you make your way back to your seats, you may be seated. Again, we want to say welcome to all of our guests. If you are a first-time guest, you can actually take out your phone right now and scan the QR code right there up on the screen or on the pew in front of you, and that will take you to our online guest card. We have just a few announcements this evening. Our Texas District Ladies Conference is coming up. Can all the ladies say amen? Amen. This is the first time. Oh, I said amen right after I said all the. Never mind. So, this is the one time that you can go. You can give the kids to the husband. The husband cannot complain because you're going to Texas District Ladies Conference. It's going to be an awesome time. If you don't have all the details, you can actually get those on the Church Center app. But that is going to be this Thursday and this Friday in Lufkin, Texas. Also, our Next Steps class is going to be starting back up. That's going to start on April 3rd, and that's going to be at 10 a.m. 
in room 102. And if you're new to our church and want to learn more about basic biblical principles, you can actually go to this class. And if you're looking to get more involved here at Porter APC, this is a great start. It's only a four-week program, and that's starting on April 3rd at 10 a.m. And if we could all stand as our ushers come forward, one of our favorite times in the service, we get to worship in our giving. There are three ways that you can give tonight. You can just drop your envelope right there in the offering bag. You can text the number up on the screen, or you can also visit our church website at porterapc.org. Let's pray over this offering. Lord, you're so good. I thank you for what you're already doing in this place. Thank you for what we feel in this place. Lord, we pray over this offering. Bless it in the I see glory as I run inside your throne. For you, I bow. Oh, oh, oh. forever, the King and glorious splendor. You are, you are, and you'll be forever, the King and glorious splendor. Can't do anything. I know. 
a wonderful preacher tonight but the only reason we come and the only reason we gather together is so that God can move in our situation and our circumstance and there let me tell you there ain't two people alike in this entire building and there is no one in this entire building that didn't walk in without a need somewhere in their life I don't know where you find yourself tonight maybe you're dealing with something You've been holding on to a promise for a long time and it just doesn't seem like it's happening. Maybe there's something you've been praying for for a long time and it just doesn't seem to happen. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what your need is. What I do know is that God is faithful. I I can't tell you why he does what he does or how. I don't have that answer. I'm not God. I just, I know he's faithful. And I know if we are don't get weary in well-doing and if we can do what we know to do, he'll make up the difference in the places where we don't know what to do. But before we go any, I I don't know how many of you need a healing in your body. I know of several needs right here. I mean, we need a God intervention. Some of you men gather around Brother Payne right there. How many, raise your hand. I mean, you need God to do something in your life. If you see somebody around you, don't, don't bombard them. But if you, well, they got him. The Bible says, whatsoever you ask in faith, believing. You know what doubt is? Doubt is faith. Doubt is faith in the wrong direction. And doubt and faith cannot live together. One has to go. I wonder what would happen right now in this place. God's already moving. His presence is moving so strong. 
Let me tell you, the preaching, all that can happen, but you can get a miracle right now. You can get what you need from God right now. You don't have to wait one more month. God is not a respecter of persons. All I got to do is say, God, right now, I'm ready for something to break. I don't have to wait till anything else in the service. Right now, right now, I need a healing in my family. Right now, I need a healing in my... I just don't think I want to wait another second. Right now, I don't care what anybody else in this room thinks. I've got some things I'm fighting in my family. i got some things I'm going through in my marriage. My kids are getting attacked by some things. And I need something to break. Why don't you forget about everybody else? And why don't you reach out to the only one that can actually make a difference and begin to call out to the God that does not know how to fail. He doesn't know how to come up short. He doesn't know how to walk away empty-handed. There is no battle that he will not win. Why don't we reach for it right now? Oh, folks, yes, it doesn't matter. We all came for the same reason, and that is to lift up the name of Jesus. Pray for your family. Lay your hands on your family. Daddy, pray for those kids.
just encourage us here for a moment how many of you you need a breakthrough you know you need a breakthrough and God's doing that it, God's working praise the Lord praise the Lord and there's lots of needs in the house and thank you for responding to the presence of the Lord and there's no telling what God's going to do here and how he's going to move we want to make room for what God wants to do amen Praise the Lord. How many of you just say, Lord, I want you to have your way in my life, in my family, in my heart. Hallelujah. Pastor McCoy was talking about a breakthrough. Sometimes we get stuck. Sometimes we get stuck. And we need a breakthrough. We need something to give. We've got to have something to change. Those of you that know our daughter, Lauren, the other night she had a flat tire. And 
we're, we're going to have prayer in just a moment, but you might get a kick out of this. She said, I want to change this by myself. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stand here and supervise. Now her tire iron's a little, it's a little small. And those lug nuts were tight. You ever been there? On the side of the road in the dark? And you can't get one loose. You put everything you got into it. It doesn't break. You got to do something different. You got to put a knee into it. Come on, you, you ever been there? You got to rock it back and forth. And here's what she did. She got it set. She stood on that thing and jumped on it. And then all of a sudden she's like, oh, something happened. And I heard that sound. It broke. Sometimes you got to go get some leverage. You got to get a breaker bar and say, you know what? I got to have a little more leverage. Because just this alone is not cutting it. Sometimes you got to get a friend. Because you got to get some leverage. Amen. That's why we pray together as a church family. That's why we come around the altar and we pray together and encourage one another. We, we need a little leverage. <laughs> this afternoon, we got, I don't usually get a Sunday afternoon nap, but I laid down for a few minutes and, and I, I will say something came to my mind. And in my mind, I saw this tire iron and I saw something given, something breaking, something moving something changing and I thought well Lord somebody must need a breakthrough tonight somebody is tired of being where they're at they're tired of being stuck they're it may not be that you're backslid it may not be that you're lost but, but something needs to give and something needs to change and, and, and something's locked down your worship and locked down your, your prayer life and, and, and locked down your victory and you're tired of being stuck and, and so I want to challenge us in this house, you, you got to do something different, it, it's time to get a hold of some leverage, it's time to do something different because what we've been doing hasn't got the job done, there's got to be a, there's got to be a step of faith somehow where we, we move into something where we've not been before and it gives and then once it gives don't you let up but you keep pushing if we need different results we've got to do something different and so we can come around the altar and we can pray the same way we've ever prayed before but, but sometimes you've got to do something different and the youth choir can get to singing and we can worship like We've worshipped before, but sometimes you got to break out of your comfort zone and you got to worship a little different than what you're used to doing. Some, sometimes you... Maybe it's been a long time since you went to the altar. And so you got to say, I'm going to do something different. I'm not staying in my pew tonight, but I'm going to go to the altar because I've got to do something different. Maybe it's been a long time since you worshipped and danced before the Lord. And so you say, you know what? I'm breaking out of the status quo. I'm breaking out of what I'm comfortable with. And so I'm going to start to worship. And I'm going to start to praise. Because I've got to have a breakthrough. I've got to break through something. Something has to give. Something has to change. Something has to move. Come on, if, if it's been a long time since you had a Holy Ghost breakthrough and spoke with tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance, you need to say that tonight I'm going to make sure there's nothing in the way of what the Lord wants to do and I'm going to have a breakthrough in my own life. Come on, this is the day. This is the night for your miracle. This is the night for your healing. So I want you to think of something different that you can do right now. Whether it's, I don't know, maybe you just stand and just turn in a circle. I don't know. Something different. Something crazy. Maybe, maybe you just worship backwards or something. I don't know. 
Maybe you come to the altar because you hadn't been to the altar in a while. Maybe you stand and lift your hands to the Lord because that's something different. Maybe you're here tonight and you're a visitor and you've never worshipped quite like this, but you're willing to have just a little faith and say, I'm going to do something different. And maybe you've never lifted your hands, but by faith you would say, Lord, I want to reach out to you and I pray that you would reach out to me. And so I'm going to lift my hands and just start talking to you. Jesus, I pray that you would touch me in a brand new way. I pray that your spirit would work in my heart in a brand new way and that you would touch me right now in Jesus' name because I'm stuck and I don't want to be here no more. I want there to be a change. I want there to be a move in me. So right now, we're we're not going to pray the same way we've been praying. Something's got to change. If we want different results, there's got to be something different that we do. And so right now, whatever God spoke to you, I want you to do it. Whether it's to worship in a different way or pray or or connect with somebody and get some leverage. But right now, I believe there's going to be a breakthrough in this house. And somebody is going to have a change. Somebody's going to get unstuck. Somebody's going to be delivered here right now. Come on, whatever God spoke to you, why don't you do it right now and start worshiping in a different way. You start praying like you've not prayed before. You lift your hands. You dance before the Lord. You do something to break out of your comfort zone today. My spirit, break through in my soul, break through in my weakness, break through in my struggle. You are the God, you are the God of the grace, through in my worship, break through in my praise, break through when I live the glory of your name, break through when I dance, break through when I shine. You are the God, you are the God of the grace, through in my heart, break through in my mind, break through. You are the God, you are the God of the grace to win my words, the faith to win my faith, grace to win my faith.
you know, there's a song. We sang it. We sang it a little bit ago. Every time we sing it, something, I can feel it. You ever notice, I don't know how it is with you. You start praying. All of a sudden, you just feel something changing. It's like, I, I can't explain it. I don't have the words. But you know something's happening. You ever had that? Couldn't explain it. Didn't know. It just Sometimes it wasn't even in church. Sometimes it was in the singing. Maybe it was while you were praying. You just knew something was breaking. Every time they sing that song, it says, The veil was torn. That's a big deal. There was a day before Calvary. Not you, not me, none of us. You had a need, you had to go to a priest, you had to go here. None of us could go in to the Holy of Holies. But after Calvary, I don't know what your need is. I don't know what you've learned to live with because you just don't think it's ever going to change. I don't know what it is. Maybe you don't even believe in yourself anymore. God believes in you. Somebody still believes in you. I don't know. I felt this so heavy. and I was like, I'm not going to go. And then I still felt it. If you walk out of here without something breaking in his presence, it's not on him. He is available to every single one. Well, this isn't my church. It's not about that. He is available. He said, draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. Seek me. Knock, and it shall be open. Seek, and you shall find. Ask, and you shall receive. It's available. And you don't have to go through me to do it. You don't have to go through your mom, your boss, your dad, your date. But there is something you have to have. Two things. Desire and sincerity it doesn't mean when you pray you have to pray O Lord that dwelleth in the seventh heaven amongst the clouds as they wrote no you say you know what God something's got to break I don't even have a clue what to do anymore I don't have a I, I don't know what all these people are doing I just know I got some stuff and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of living with it. It weighs on my mind. It weighs trying to raise a kid in this messed up world. Trying to keep a family together in this messed up world. Trying to live to please you in a world that says it doesn't matter. And God, I'm just trying to keep it together. But something's got to break. And if that something's me, then God let it break wide open. But I'm so thankful today. I don't have to go around. Let me tell you, we could turn the music off. You don't need the music to touch God. We could walk outside this building and start praying outside. We don't need the building to touch God. All you need is a desire to say, you know what? I'm tired of going through the most. Seems like everybody's got a special self-help speech. Everybody's got a book out. Everybody's got a special this. We got a song for this. We got a, we got a conference for that. Let me tell you, there's one thing and there's one thing only that you need. You need to be able to get into the presence of God and you need to be able to hear His voice and we be able to feel His presence and to be changed by his presence and by his voice and that can happen right here you don't have to wait for it the Bible says whosoever is willing let him come and drink freely that means you don't have to live here well I got a little bit of more so no you can step up like it's a buffet and said I ain't leaving till I got everything that I want I'm not leaving until I've gotten everything that I needed in this place tonight I saw someone the other day They were saying, and I've said this before, they were meeting. And boy, they were looking. They were like, Pastor Joel, Pastor Joel, you know, if, if we could do this and if we could get, if we could get you marketed like this, this is going to make a difference. And, and if, we could, 
if we could get the color schemes. And, and they went through the building. They're like, you don't want this color because this is a little off. And this one is this. And your lights. They said, you know what? We need blue lights up here. The blue, it, it sets the tone for this. And, and you need some of these right here. And, and Pastor, Pastor Joel, if we could, they went through. They said, if we could dim the lights at a certain point, it creates the atmosphere in the room. And then if when you do that, if, if, you, if you come into your music like this, and if when you do your preaching, you'll get with the song person, and so it flows and it sets the tone as you're coming to a close, and everybody's right there in the right thing. And vanilla and cinnamon are the number one smells that put people at ease. And if you could put those throughout the sanctuary, it sets the tone. Have we memorized what the anointing felt like to the point? That we've had to doctor it up enough to make us feel like we didn't lose what was more important than anything else. Because let me explain something. There ain't enough lights to put in this ceiling to make up for if the presence of God isn't moving. And they don't have a song good enough. And they don't, the bass can't thump hard enough to make up for the difference of the lack of desire. And they don't make a building pretty enough that will that make up the difference for when a church no longer... It's all about Him. I can't give you the lights. I don't know. Jesus, I give you Jesus. That's all you need. Let me tell you, when those people, when they walked up to the disciples, they didn't say, hey, show me where the miracle of the 5,000 loaves happened. Show me how to walk on water. Hey, bring me over to that one. They said, sir, we would see Jesus. We walked in here with one knee. If I can't find Jesus, then we might as well turn this into a parking lot or a bowling alley because this place exists for one reason and for one reason only so that the broken can come in and be restored. The lost can be found. The hopeless can find hope. The messed up family can be made whole so a young person can be saved. Children can be raised to love God. It exists for one reason and one reason reason only and his name is Jesus that's all that matters and if we walk out without that none of the rest matters I can't bring an addict in here and say look look at these lights if you if you get under this ambient lighting every desire pick your pleasure it's a bar, it's a tab, it's heroin, it's this, it's that, it's this, it's that. Go through the list. But if you get under these lights, it won't do a thing for you. Oh, come sit right here. I know you're going through a divorce, and I know your kids won't talk to you, and they're, they're getting introduced to things you never even dreamed a kid would be introduced to. But if you'll just listen to this song and let it flow through your spirit, squash that. We would see Jesus just get me to Jesus and when I get there I'm going to do like what brother Brian said and I'm going to put something extra into it let me tell you we want that car we work a little bit longer we want to get the grade we study a little bit longer you want to not me but some of you want to get in a little better shape you run a little bit further and you, you change your day you do something let me tell you I want you you know what I've tried and I've prayed and this is all God's done do something different Go further. Do something you've never done. Quit sitting there sucking your thumb. Well, God ain't doing it. God owes me nothing. Nothing. What I deserve is to be lost. What I deserve is to go to hell. What I deserve is for my family to fall apart because of my stupid decisions and because we mess up. And we, but what I have is all because of his mercy. If he never healed another person, I'd still be in debt. If he never blessed me again, I'm still have to live in his debt. If he never did another thing for me, if he never touched me, I am in his debt. He has been good to me. And if anybody gets the extra in my life, let me ask you something. Does he get the rest of you? Or does he get the best of you? Does he get what's left after work, after play, after family, after the job, after the fun, after the vacation? 
Does he get whatever is left in that tired body after everything else has been done that I wanted to do? Or does he get the best of me and everything else gets the rest? I remember I was in a youth camp. I was 12 years old and I didn't understand it at the time. And there was a preacher and he he had a lot of young, of course, we were being young people. We were kind of, half were playing around, half were praying, you know. It, he said, I want you to, ha- I want to ask you all a question. He said, everybody put your hands down. Everybody put their hands down. He said, how many of you have been in the presence of God so strong that literally everybody in a building of thousands started hitting their knees and their hands could they could not stand the presence of God was moving so strong and it was just touching every single person it was like a wave going through the building and no preacher preaching nobody singing just people praying and you could see people people that had walked into church for the first time later said we couldn't explain it there's just something that overtook me and then I, I, I just I began to surrender everything I never felt anything like it he said until everybody in that building was crying out to God and either down on their knees or nobody raised their hand he said I have two notes for you he said number one it's real I've seen it happen he said number two is this is what scares me we're raising a generation that doesn't have a clue what that looks like all it takes to lose our families is for us to get just connected enough in this world and to learn how to mimic the anointing. It looks like we got it together, but in all reality, a vast majority of our life is not spent in prayer and in study. All it takes, it took Joshua, after all of the victories, after going all the way into the promised land, the Bible says one generation, there arose another generation, that knew not God neither the works that he had done we are one generation away from a group of in fact you know what all you young people 12 and up why don't you come up I want you to come on this platform real quick 12 and up Sometimes it's good to know what you're fighting for. Well, I don't know why we're fighting. I don't know where God. This is why we fight. People ask me, they said, Bob McCoy says, some of them, they're worshiping and they're doing all that shouting business. They don't even know what they're doing. I ain't getting on to them. Well, I disagree. You got a right to be wrong, sweetie. I hope they become doctors, good lawyers, ethical lawyers. I hope they become business owners. I hope they change everything about their world. And I hope they vote and they vote right. We can talk about that. If you don't vote, you can't complain about anything. It's a privilege. But I pray that whatever they do is secondary to who they are. And it's secondary to their walk with God. But let me tell you, all it takes, all it takes is for us to decide, you know what, we've come far enough, we've done enough, that's it, we don't have to do anything else. We don't have to push like we used to, we don't have to pray like we used to. Look, we're doing good, we're, man, God. All it takes is for this generation to be raised in an atmosphere without the things that were handed down to us 
And when their babies come into this world, you're not going to recognize your own family at a family reunion. That's how quick it can change. It doesn't take long. One generation, that's all it takes. Pastor, why are they all praying around that altar? Let me t- I'll tell you why. Because when they go to school and when they go to college, well, you're brainwashing them. Yes. I'm doing my dead level best. Well, you shouldn't do that. Whoever says that's an idiot. Because the world is trying to brainwash your kids and my kids as quick as they can. I want them brainwashed, but I want them brainwashed by the Word of God. I want them brainwashed by prayer. I want them brainwashed by living for God. Yes, I I want them to be so connected to God and connected to His Word that it doesn't matter what they run into into that world out there. They are ready for whatever awaits them. And they are ready to stand shoulders back and to stand tall, unashamed of living for God, unashamed of being everything God called them to be and able to explain able to articulate why they live the way they live instead of daddy said. That's the worst no this is why we fight if you can't fight for anything else you fight for them that's the future that's why I'm smiling up here half the time because I look down and say hey they could be anywhere doing anything the world says they're old enough to get pregnant they're old enough to get drunk. The world, the world says it's old enough for them to decide whether they want to be a girl or not. With our world, stupid. If they're old enough to do all of that, they're old enough to have a prayer life. They're old enough to know the Word of God for themselves. They're old enough to be faithful to God. They're old enough to have a ministry. They're old enough to know what a prayer room is like. They're old enough to be faithful. And not only are they old enough, they are able. They have the ability. Let me tell you, I present to you some of the greatest young people that this world has ever known. And I'm proud of them. I am proud of their state. I know they're not perfect, but I'm proud of them. And we're going to keep fighting for them. Amen. Y'all can go ahead. But God help us. If we expect them to find a place in God that's completely new because they never found it in mom and daddy's presence. Would you stand with me all over this place? I know it's been a little bit different tonight. Like he said, maybe you tried some things. Well, it's just not breaking. It's just. How many of you ever had a flat? Some of you are highly blessed. I've had three on one trip. I have run out of spares. Wait, keep your hands up that you had a flat. Oh, this is good. Okay, we're we're going to. While your hand is up, how many of you, after trying, couldn't get it off? She's like, you know what? God's will for this thing to be flat oh well and you just drove that car for the remainder of its days without changing it huh good thing good thing you don't we don't drive our car the way we act with our spirit because there's some things in our spirit that didn't break and we've just decided since it didn't break we'll just live like this well oh, no 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 you got to get busy you boy got to put some weight on that thing oh well surprise surprise 5 minutes a day in prayer didn't get that out of my home looks like I'm going to have to go to work looks like I'm going to have to find somewhere and I'm going to have to get a hold of the enemy and I'm going to have to get some things out of my home looks like daddy going to have to go to work and be daddy and get some things out of my kids lives Mama's going to have to be mama. We're going to have to start going after some things. It's worth it. If you don't send your kids out of your home with anything else, you make sure they knew that mom and daddy prayed and they knew what the presence of God felt like and they didn't just feel it in church. If church is the only place it happens, we are failing our family. Let me tell you, the church is a wonderful thing, but it was never meant to be the greatest influence in a kid's life. The greatest influence in their life is what happens at home. 
I don't know what you're going on, but I tell you what, I wish we could pray all over this place. I wish we could take a few more moments. I don't know what it is. How many of you are willing to be honest? Well, this is a tough one now. See, I've been in that place, and they were like, how many of you want God to break something? I'm like, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I know what he wants to break. I don't want it broken. I like my way, and I like my will, and I like my way of doing things, and I like doing it my way. That's called the spirit of Cain. Doing it my way. Well, it feels good. Of course it does. There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. But there is a way that seems right, but it's not. But when you be honest, say, God, David's prayer is a a powerful prayer. Search me. Oh, come here, Colt. Come here. You didn't have to testify today, so you didn't get embarrassed. That's a good cousin. Your boy's 14, ain't he? That's the biggest. What is with 14-year-olds these days? Mike, my parents didn't feed me right. They gave me stuff that made me go out. I got robbed. I was supposed to have been 6'10". I'm not overweight. I'm under tall. Maybe 7'11". There's some things that are hard to pray. There's another part of us that you start praying, say, Lord, search me. There's that part of you says, hey, 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 easy, easy. You, you know we got some things that we just let him search everything. He's, he's going, you, God's nosy. Everybody's like, Jesus, come to my house. <laughs> you kidding? You ain't for real. He ain't a good guest. Oh, I can't believe you said that. Quit kidding with yourself. I know what kind of Jesus you want coming to your house. You want Jesus to come and go into the parlor and sit down and wait for his sweet tea and just say, but he ain't like that. He comes in the front door and he goes straight to the bedroom. He starts going through your closet. Where do you wear this? You wear that out? Oh my God. You know the drawers that nobody, oh no, he opens all of them. He goes through the music list. He goes through your books. He goes through, he, he gets your phone, goes through your app. He goes through your deleted messages. He has some uh, special ability. He even checks the things that have been deleted. He is nosy. He gets into your business. He said, look, you want me to come in. You don't give me sections. You give me everything. And don't worry, whatever I find... My blood will cover it, and I can help you live without it. But you got to give me everything. He says, David says, search me and know me. Don't just look at me. Get into who I am. Not just what I do, but my motives for doing it. I fed five people, this homeless people this week. It don't count if you took a selfie while you did it and posted it. That don't count. Search me and know me. And if there be any wicked thing in me, take it. You want to know what to do? God will tell you. You start praying that prayer. Say, God, top to bottom, what I love, the way I talk, the way I think, everything in my life, I, something's got to break and there's something in me. So there's something in my spirit, something in my will. Hey, every time that I have not been able to break in the presence of God, it's because there was something that I had locked away that I was not ready to surrender. I wanted it to look like I was, but in my mind, I knew I was not ready to turn loose of everything. And God said, uh-uh, uh-uh. You can't do that with me. I know when you're high, I want everything. I'll be God over everything or God of nothing. You ever try to put a puzzle piece together without some of the puzzles, without some of the pieces? That's the most frustrating thing in the world. It never looks like the box. You do puzzles with my little bin. Let me tell you, when you start just playing on missing pieces, because he puts them in his pockets, he puts them everywhere, he flicks them, he does everything, and then forgets he did it. It doesn't matter how you threaten him. He don't know what he did with those. 
And then there's four pieces. The horse doesn't have a head. It doesn't have three feet. It, you, Sometimes it's like that's with us. We got some of the stuff what we're ashamed of and some of the pieces that we don't, we, we don't really want to admit we've got. Like, here, God, put all this back together. You don't want to see these pieces. I says, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. I promise you, I can make the picture look beautiful. I can make it something you never, but you got to give me all the pieces. But you don't understand. There was a marriage before this one. Give it to me. Give me that broken heart. You don't know what happened to me when I was a child. Give me the abuse. Give me the scars. Give me the stories. Give me what happened. Give me what shouldn't have happened. Give me the things that you wish nobody knew about. Give it to me. I know your friend stabbed you in the back when you trusted him. He said, I won't stab you in the back. You can trust me. You can put it in my hands. I won't do anything but heal and make whole. But you got to give me everything. How many people are ready for God to do something in your life? It's not for everybody. I realize that. But you'll be willing and honest to say, you know what, pastor, or if you're not, I'm not your pastor, preacher. I do want God to do whatever he wants to do in my life. I don't understand all the ways. I really don't. But I really do want God to do whatever he wants to do in my life. It's not hard. I want us to pray all those places. They're going to sing something else out of whatever it is. And all over this place, I wonder... If you could search everything in your life, I don't care what you come up with. Say, God, I'm not holding anything back. I've tried doing this a thousand times and holding this back or that. God, it's not working. God, I'm giving you everything I've got. I am ready for something to break. And now I can't do this on my own anymore. He's preached about it. God's been moving since the beginning. But some of us have held back thinking, I, I, I got some stuff I'm holding on to. I'm not even supposed to preach tonight. But there's somebody that God wants to heal right now. And there's somebody that God wants to deliver. And there's somebody that God wants to break through the shame and the past and the mistakes. And he wants to heal. And he wants to make whole. He's just waiting for somebody to say, fine, God. Here. I can't pretend it's okay anymore. I can't pretend I'm walking around like I got it together. But after I walk out of here, the enemy's messing with my mind. And I feel like giving up. I can't do this anymore. All over this place, I don't care how you pray, whether it's on your knees or whether it's hands lifted, head bowed.